I never seen those when I was in North Korea. I never seen this kind of art because of all the like the trees in the in the mountain were cut down to become a fear for us to cook food. Most of our like mountains are naked. I wasn't able to see this kind of natural beauty. When the communists came in Korea, they destroyed all those like traditional homes. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Yeomi Park. I'm a North Korean defector human rights activist. So today in this video, I'm going to show you for the first time the North Korean traditional art. The history was forgotten us, even to North Koreans. Our journey as, as Koreans began more than thousands of, almost 5,000 years before the Kims came in. However, when this family came, they erased all about who we are as all that long journey that we came on about. But now, after I, outside of North Korea, I started keep digging what am I, what kind of person I am, and my people's history, and I became very interested in things that before the Kims. However, I was able to get some art from North Korea that are not about propaganda, but still maintain the, our people's spirit in the art pieces. So I'm thrilled to show you that something is not about propaganda, it's not about just Kims, but it is about us as North Koreans. Uh, of course, North Koreans and South Koreans were the same people almost 80 years ago. However, the things that South Korean kept and the North Korean kept are different. You know, the, our culture diverges dramatically, and therefore I'm sure the pieces that I'm gonna show you is going to be very different. So this first one, it's a, it's like about a, the youth song, song of youth, and it. I mean, of course, the ballet is not our thing. However, I felt like it was really something about endorsing beauty in it. Because in North Korea, in the current after the communists came in, the beauty wasn't something that was cherished. Women have to wear these like baggy clothes, has like uh, labor clothes. As long as as soon as we show our anchors or something, we would go like jail for it. And wearing these accessories were not disallowed. And I'm sure you cannot see me like how obsessed I am expressing myself through like fashion, jewelry, you know, makeup, because this thing was completely banned in North Korea. And in being a human, I think pursuing beauty is such a natural thing for me. And this is why this, this art kept my attention that they were expressing beauty in this photo. It wasn't about, you know, let's become a revolutionary and fight for our like party and socialism. It was just about being beautiful. And at least that's what I thought. And I thought was like, this is so amazing that my country can, you know, embrace beauty like this. So the second one is, uh, it's called about the Miindo. It's a, the portrait of beautiful, beauty again. <laughs> and, I like her Korean like a uh, hanbok. It is uh, a lot more traditional style than the, the South Koreans wear. The, even the hanbok in the North and South became different because South Korea changed it, altered a little bit, and North Koreans kept the way it was. So it's a bit a lot way more traditional. And I see those like uh, flowers, those like we call dozagi or those vests. And I never seen those when I was in North Korea. I never seen this kind of art. So for me, it was even even fascinating. And this one is about a bride. <laughs> it reminded me of some of the, the Western arts. There was about like bride and groom and those kinds of tradition. But it is a, if, you know, North Korea kept, not like with the communism, but maybe kept the freedom, we would still do this kind of a wedding that where we celebrate our tradition. So this is a, it's gorgeous. I felt like this bride, this portrait captured such a good spirit of our people and Koreans. And as you can see, like, I mean, I'm sure like a lot of you don't get the subtleties, but 
I never seen this kind of uh, the accessories that she's holding and the hanbok because it was only hanbok that I wore okay, was in South Korea and looked so different. And that's how I kept, keep thinking like how there's so much even variation within in Korean tradition. So in Korea, back in the old days, there's those ladies in that ranking, you know, didn't work, always like doing this like sewing and and of course like when I was born, they wouldn't ever women to do that. They would like make us to all work like cows, literally, and never endorsing like that kind of femininity. But in this uh, thing, I can see how much they were endorsing that femininity and being a woman and I mean, I like the freedom to endorse anything. <laughs> uh, and here we go. Another one, it's of a dancer. So this, the thing that she's like uh, doing is a very traditional instrument of Korean people. And so that was, I think, it's like of a very old tradition of Korean uh, uh, instrument that she's playing here. And I like all those like backgrounds, the trees, everything. And here is another the portrait of a beauty. <laughs> I don't know, it was like a real person, what kind of person, but everything, the lines, everything seems to be more there was a real model that was standing there, but I don't know how the they came about in drawing this portrait. And this is a more like nature. Um, painting. It's about the sunset of a lake, and I can see the years like 2004 or 2014. It's pretty recent painting. And by the way, if I like it, I can get it from Pyongyang. But I don't ask me how I'm gonna get it. <laughs> and this one is about a wave in the ocean. Because Korea is a peninsula and there's a lot of ocean, so I can see that they were more portraying the real environment they were in. And North Korea is a very mountainous, has lots of water. And this one I like, this is like a waterfall. Uh, even though like you'd guess, you know, in North Korea is not developed, it's not industrious, you know, 99% of the roads are not paved. You'd guess North Korea would be this much nature in there, but no. Because of all the, like, the trees in the, in the mountain were cut down to become a fear for us to cook food. Most of our like mountains are naked. I wasn't able to see this kind of natural beauty. I was so shocked when I came to America. In the East Coast, I drove and went to Cascade. And there were so many, many trees, and like that's the thing. Like one thing, North Korea is a lot of shocked by the seeing that many trees left in the mountain. I think this thing felt very special, and this is how the method drawing this tree. I mean, I never seen that kind of a method in the museums before. So maybe they are using a very, a bit of different technique. I'm sorry that I'm not an artist, <laughs> but this looked like how he drew the like the tree lines. Very quite unique for me at least. And I love this one. It just reminded me of uh, the walks that I had uh, on the our backside of the mountains. You know, like I don't remember ever seeing flowers like roses in the, in the flower store. There were never a flower store. But more those like uh, this kind of flowers in the mountain. Not big, doesn't have a lot of smell, but they are very beautiful. So uh, this is like a turco bada, the, the oceans of uh, street like uh, flowers. <laughs> I don't know how to say turco. And this one is another the portrait of a beauty, and she is like in a very traditional Korean house. When the communists came in Korea, they destroyed all those like traditional homes, and they say it's a uh, the old that is that didn't good to us, that they destroyed all of it, and just looking at that kind of house exists in North Korea is like really refreshing. 
I didn't get to see those like traditional houses. I went to South Korea and went to those you know old town museum towns. That's when I saw it. But I guess maybe Korea still has it at some part. And this last one. So supposedly this one is tigers. And I mean North Korea, I don't know is a propaganda or not. These types of tigers only exist in the back to mountain in Korean Peninsula. <laughs> they call back to San Horangi is like uh, the tigers of back to mountain. So this one won some huge international competition. And I'm mean, who the hell I know, right? <laughs> but that's what North Korea says. And this one was drew by Shim Hyuk Chul. 2015, pretty recently. A lot of people say that those tigers were extinct in the back of the mountain area, but North Korea claims they do have tons of them there. Since I've never seen a tiger in the mountains, so I cannot confirm the story. But it's, it's all propaganda, I guess. They keep saying that Korean people have this spirit of this, you know, the tigers in the back of the mountain that is very resilient, strong, ingenious, all that spirit the tigers have. Uh, but, I mean, this is amazing. I, I've never seen this kind of art before. I definitely see that because North Korea wasn't uh, globalized, like, you know, mixed with the international community, some things they kept very original, you know, a lot of it. I mean, South Koreans are very, they became very open and mixed around. But North Koreans, I think, about something about their art. I'm not an artist, but I can see it's quite different technique they use. So guys, if you're an artist, please let me know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what kind of style of art is this. Uh, I hope that this was a bit, a bit new and the side that you didn't get to see before because most of North Korean stories are about you know, oppression and starvation and hardship. But I just want to show the more human side of our people and our history. So thank you guys for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys all next time.